Good evening people, this is Pradeep here from Tech and Training Corporate Solutions. In this video, I'm going to talk about how do you look up the duplicate data. When I say duplicate data means if your database have multiple duplicate entries and if you want to uniquely fetch any data, then it's a very challenging thing. If I talk about the current scenario that I'm working on is the employee database where I have the details of all the employees within an organization. Now here the challenge is every record appears multiple times depending on the number of years they have spent in the organization. Having said that what I mean is if this person is working since two years then his records will appear twice in this database. Similarly this person is working since four years so you can see four occurrences of this data. But each year the salary changes so you will see a different salary for each record. What I need to do is I just need to fetch the salary uniquely into a separate database. As an example here I do not have duplicate employee code it's single employee code. Since the person has spent more than one year I want salary in separate column. According to my database the maximum tenure of any employee is five years. So I've created five columns. Now here I want to get the data of each employee and split it horizontally in multiple columns. Now if I have to use VLOOKUP for this, then let's see how can this be done. When I type equal to VLOOKUP, I choose the employee code here. I am freezing this employee code. Now, I want this data to be pulled from this database. But the column that I need to begin with is going to be the employee column. So that has to be the first column. Now I'll freeze that data as well. Now when I say column number, then I need to look for the column number in this data. So my column number is four. So I type four comma zero. Now for the next column, I again have to do the simple similar VLOOKUP. So I'll do the VLOOKUP once again, comma, the data is coming from this database. So I'll select the same range once again, I'll freeze it. And now the column number again is going to be one, two, three, four. So I'll type four comma zero. Now the problem here is for both the records, the salary is the first salary that is visible in the first table. But if I see here, these two are separate salaries, but the figures that were pulled in the other database is same. So this is the biggest challenge in VLOOKUP. So now let's see how do we use index and match function and the unique way to fetch the duplicate data. Before I go ahead, let me explain the columns function. And here I'm going to select three separate columns. And now when I press enter, you will see the answer is three. That is because I have selected three separate columns. But if I increase the number of columns, then this function will give me the number of columns that were selected. It doesn't matter how many rows are selected. So see, if I increase the number of rows, the answer is going to be the same because in the selection, there were six columns. Now, why am I saying this? <clears throat> I am saying this because if I modify the same column function this way that I'll freeze the first parameter, but the second reference, I'll keep it as it is. Now see what have I done here? It is R2 colon R2. When I press enter, you will see it's one because only single cell is selected. But if I drag this formula horizontally, now automatically two cells have got selected because we have frozen the first R2 and the second R2 was free. So R2 became S2 when we drag it horizontally. And similarly, when we further drag it, you get to see the column numbers. So now I have seen that there are five columns that are selected. So columns function gives me five. Now same function is going to be used in our index and match function as well. Now, one more thing that we need to take care about is this duplicate column. As long as this employee code remains duplicated, 
nothing can be done. There's no feature in Excel that can fetch the duplicate data. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to create a deduplicate column. All these values are going to be deduplicated. So here I'm creating a deduplicate column. Now in this column, I'll write the function count if. Now see here, it's an interesting function. I'm going to count this value within this range and that will tell me how many times this employee code has appeared in this entire range or the range which I'm going to select. And if the count is more than one, then that value is duplicate. Rest other values are unique. Now, in order to solve this problem, what I'll do is I'll create a range of the single cell and I'll count the same value. Now, you will be surprised to see that it's D10 colon D10 comma D10. And if I press enter and drag it down, I'm not going to get anything other than one. But before I hit enter, I'm going to freeze the first D10. Now you will see that this first D10 is frozen, but the second D10 is free, similar to columns function that we did. And within this range, I'm going to count the value, which is D10. Now see how this helps us. If I drag this formula down, you will see the first E0001 is appearing once because this value appears once in this range. But if I go down, this value appears twice. Hence, within this blue range, E0001 is appearing twice. So output is two. Now, next thing, if I drag it down, here you will see that within this blue range, E0002 is appearing once. So output of this is one. If I drag it down, you will see it appears twice. Similarly, if I drag it, this appears four times and it goes on. So I'm going to drag this further down. So now I have got how many times each entry is being repeated in D column, but that does not solve my problem completely. So what I'll do is I'm going to concatenate this function with this value itself. Now you will see the first value is 1E0001. The second value is 2E0001. And if I drag it further down, every value in this column now has got converted into a unique value. So here is the duplicate column and here is the unique column. So what we have done is this column is deduplicated with this technique. Now, let's see how can I use this column to fetch the respective value. So in order to fetch the respective value, I'm going to name this column once again. So I'll select this column and name it as the duplicate. I'll also tell you that this entire column, I'm going to name it as header. This entire data, I'm going to name it as database. So now this column is named as D duplicate. This entire database is called as database and this header is called as header. Now let's see how do I use these names in my formula. So I'll type equal to index. Now this is going to be an index and match function once again. Now for the people, those who are not aware of index and match function, they can view the videos which are being displayed at the top. These are the links to take you to the examples of index and match function. You can watch those videos and then come back to this exercise. Now, here in index function, I'll press shift F3 to open this function argument screen and I'll type database. Now, here, like we discussed earlier that this is going to be an index and match function. So to fetch the row number of this employee code, will have to use match function, but this is going to be a different match function. So in this match function, first of all, I see that these numericals are there before the employee code. So I'll have to have these numbers. So in order to create these numbers, I'm going to use columns function. And here I'll select R7 colon R7, close the bracket, and I'll freeze the first R7. 
Now this R7 is going to give me the number 1, 2, 3 and 4 as we track horizontally. Now that is further to be clubbed with this employee code. Now here I will freeze the column but not the row. Now this entire thing is going to be looked up in this duplicate column. So now I'll freeze that. Since I have named it so I do not need to freeze it and I can simply go ahead and put zero because this is a perfect match. Further to that I'll go ahead and use the second match function. Now the people those who are not able to see this clearly they can view the formula in the formula bar or they can view the formula here. So I'll write the second match function or else here I don't need to write a match function because all the data the salary data is going to be looked in this salary column. So I just need to count the count the position of salary column. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So I'll put the column number 7 manually and now you will see that my salary has come. So now I'll select this horizontally and I'll drag this formula vertically and you will now see that my salary figures have populated from that column. Before I go ahead and tell you how do we get rid of this hash NA error message, let's check if the salary figures are correct. So the first salary is 4163 and the second salary is 47,884. So that's something nice. So now I'll pick up a random salary like E0013. So let me find out E0013, what is the salary figure? E0013 has 51,000. 59,000, 68,000, 78,000 and 89,000. So these are the figures. So 51, 59, 68, 78 and 89. So let me see if these salary figures have populated correctly here or not. So when I go here, 59, 68, 78 and 89,000. So salary figures are absolutely correct. Now, what I need to do is in order to get rid of this error message I'll select the entire range once again and I'll put this in if error function now this if error function is a unique function which helps us to remove the errors so I've selected this if error function here I get the value and if this function ret returns an error message I'll replace those error messages by double inverted comma or a blank space now you will notice that I already have selected the entire range and my formula is in editing mode so I don't need to now enter and drag it horizontally and vertically. What I can do is I can simply press Ctrl and enter to paste this formula in the selected cells. Now to your surprise you will see that all the error messages have been replaced with space. Now one more thing that I can do here is I do not see the currency symbol and the currency formatting. So I can press Ctrl, Shift and 4 which gives me the currency symbol here. So now people you can see how have I converted the vertical data into a horizontal data and fetch the respective figures. So this is the way how we can look up the data. So people I have one more scenario which is left with me is how to look up the data on multiple criteria. Assume that your data does not have a unique field like employee code but it has got certain data which collectively makes or identifies a unique record. So how do you look up those kind of data? That's an interesting problem. We'll see in the next video. Till then, I hope you have learned something new today. Please leave your comment and suggestions. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.